Yeah, no riots. A pretty pretty clean sweep uh, by the Republicans, you know, with, totally. with Donald Trump and the, the Senate. And uh, it seemed as if the market, even as the election was going on, was was feeling really good in the after hours. And then the day after the election, I mean, I saw like two and a half percent up across the board. Do, does that make sense to you? Do you do you, do you see why investors are, are feeling positive about that? Um, well, so I tell my users that uh, about something called a transient external stochastic shock, transient external stochastic shock. This is a short duration kind of news cycle. So that's the transient and the external. So it's not from, you know, anything organic in the market, meaning buying and selling pressures that are normally present based on how well a company or a series of companies is doing. This was an external thing that happened that caused a shock. And when we say stochastic shock, it means that it's off the rails, right? That's what stochastic shock means, off the rails, um, because stochastics are measured in exponentials, not necessarily in linear. So if you have a stochastic shock, it's off the rails, right? So yeah, that presidential election was off the rails. We saw a ton of money flow into the markets, not just the equities market. I mean, the S&P, the Dow, it shot up through the roof. NASDAQ shot up through the roof, but so did bonds, right? Bonds shot up through the roof. But you know what? You, you saw a lot of people, not just mutual fund traders, although I think mutual fund, pension fund, uh, hedge fund traders, especially hedge fund traders, started the ball rolling. They did some buying. And what did that do? People who were excited, right? And and this election was a referendum, right? And there was, you know, a majority. It wasn't even just, um, you know, one of these things where an electoral college win. This, th there was a uh, big divide in the popular vote, which means people wanted this to happen. And so those people that wanted this to happen, their retail money, we see a huge chunk of retail money flowing into the markets the day after. Um, what I think we're seeing now, SIP, and uh, it, it's becoming pretty clear in the price patterns and in the VIX, is already only you know two trading days after that big pop on Wednesday, we're seeing those mutual fund traders. They're very savvy, right? These big money investors, the ones who control the most of the market, the ones we've heard about when it came to, you know, the whole GameStop things. These guys really are in charge. And it looks like based on the order flow. So, you know, you can you can get an idea of what the heck is happening often by looking at how big the orders are, right? If it's an order that has a few shares, we attribute that to retail traders like me and my investing group and just the little guys out there. If it's these orders that, you know, the number of shares is in the tens and hundreds of thousands, we attribute that to the mutual fund traders. So I'm seeing the mutual fund traders, market, you know, pension fund traders, and especially those hedge fund traders. I'm seeing them starting to take their profits, right? They like they put the money in to get the ball rolling, to get like, you know, basically hype it up. And then everybody, little guys put their money in and now they're taking their money out now that the price, you know, that we're seeing us tapping on the S&P at that $6,000 level. I have a feeling there's a lot of people who have, you know, limit orders at 6,000 for selling. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, and we'll we'll check back next Friday. But I won't wouldn't be surprised if the market corrects next week and comes right back down. We already saw the bonds; bonds are already starting to sell off, and it hasn't even been forty eight hours. So I almost feel like this transient. Uh, you know, as this election gets in our rearview mirror, um, it, it's going to be uh, we'll we'll probably correct to where we were.